Buona domenica. Ciao, everyone. I'm Esther. I'm Alfred, and we're reporting live from Sicily on this great Sunday. Hope everyone is having a great day, no matter what day you're watching. We come to you every week talking about all things Sicilian, and today we have lots of news for you. Uh, we're, of course, going to be talking about traveling to Italy and Sicily. There's some news there. We're also going to talk a little bit about the Sicilian language, but we're going to start out today talking about the men and women of Sicanella, true heroes that are accepting because Sicanella is one of the only naval bases that exists in this area, uh, refugees from Afghanistan and also asylum seekers. Thousands have come here. Imagine Sicanella is not that big. It's about 4,000 uh, men and women that are working there. And then there's the influx of all these refugees. They've had to do a turnaround really quickly to help them out. Now, just think about it. We're talking housing, we're talking food, we're talking, these people are coming here with nothing on their backs. So they're calling on volunteers. And again, the men and women of Siganella, I take a tip my hat off to them, Alfred. That's why I'm wearing the hat. And I not know. only is it the fine naval personnel there, but it's the defense contractors as well, people who handle the logistics. Do you know, for example, that once a cart is used because they're being housed on carts, they have to be discarded because they're considered to be soiled. So imagine picking up or trying to pick up several thousand, several thousand carts, just the carts alone. They've had to bring in the field canteens, the mess canteens, yeah. to feel, feed the people with halal food, which is according to the, the Quran. Uh, they have worked 15 and 16 hour shifts. Yeah. Have you read about that in the papers? No. The only thing that's coming out every once in a while are several press releases from SIG itself. But we're reporting it today yeah. that the people from SIG and Ella, who have handled several thousand and, and Alfred, people it's not, from Afghanistan, and it's not several just thousand. Cots. It's huh? not just cots and foods. I mean, they need diapers. They need one. Tooth of, uh, our friend was telling us they, they need chargers. They need everyday stuff. Toothbrushes. Toothbrushes. Toothpaste, things of a health nature. Yeah. Yes, they do. And yesterday they called out for local volunteers in the expat community who are down there right now doing whatever it is that has to be done, yeah. whether it's cleaning or moving stuff or blowing leaves or making space, but it's, it's our heroes, do. again, yeah. our heroes. Yeah. Okay. So that is who that's, are working tirelessly for us. So that's something going on. Yeah. The latest though is the first uh, group is going to the United States. The first now. 669. The first, the first six or the first right. group is going to 69. And, but as they go, go in, others have come in the last several days. Okay. So these last flights out of Kabul, uh, Kabul, uh, they've been heading here. Yeah. Okay. They've been heading here. And now, on that note. Yeah, I wanted to say something. Jimmy had mentioned uh, the CNN did a nice piece on Afghanistan, the 13 heroes who died. Today is I have a little bit of a heavy heart because one of them, uh, Joanna Rosario, is from my hometown of Lawrence, Massachusetts. It seems that Lawrence, Mass, a 25 year old uh, angel warrior, okay, yeah. graduated of graduate of Lawrence High. A graduate of Bridgewater State. Okay, it seems like Lawrence has a for a small little city of eighty thousand people. We have a lot of veterans in the city, yeah. and there's been a lot of heroes in the Immaculate Conception Cemetery and other cemeteries there who have given their lives um, for America. Okay, it's just great, and but it's a very been, sad we've day had, today we've in had, Lawrence. We've had a heavy heart thinking about yes, that. Yes, all day and yesterday everyone, I was and bummed. everyone, and everyone that bummed. Was everybody's affected. been bombed. Everybody's bombed. God bless them. God protect them. Okay, and, and God we, speed for them so they get out of harm's way as quickly as possible. But we're not going to talk about politics Amen. today. Amen. Let's move on. No, no politics okay. today, please. All, all right. right. So I want to show you guys this. My Italian teacher came over with her husband, and he makes. Uh, pieces of ceramic, and he gifted me uh, with this. It's a cacciotti. It's an artichoke made out of ceramics. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because we had a really fascinating conversation about the Sicilian language. Our friend Bernie Sapienza was here with his beautiful girlfriend, and he was telling Susan, Susan 
And he was telling me that it was just so strange for him because he was born here in Catania and he went uh, to the United States at a young age. And when he came back to Sicily, it was so strange to him that all of a sudden, you know, because he left here speaking Sicilian, as did your grandparents, as many of your grandparents or family members came, left here to the United States or whatever country speaking Sicilian. And when he came back, he was shocked that he was talking to his cousins, he was going to stores and restaurants, and everyone was talking Italian. And we had a beautiful discussion uh, with our with Rosalba, who's my Italian teacher, about the origins and the importance of the Sicilian language. Because as you guys know, a language is really what unites and defines a nation, defines a culture. And Sicilian has existed here on the island since millennia, right? Since the Sicans, the Sicils, the Eliminians, they were here, the pre uh, the people that were first initially here in Sicily spoke Sicilian. Now, when the Greeks came, the official language became Greek, but they still spoke Sicilian. Over on the West Coast, there was, it was more Phoenicians. Then the Romans came, and the official language be, became Latin, but everyone still spoke Sicilian, everyday people, everyday conversation. And then came, you know, the Byzantine, the Arabs, the Normans, and they all introduced their uh their dialect, and that was the official language. But Sicilian was still spoken among the people, not among the educated. If you were going to go to school, you were going to be taught the, and by the way, only the wealthy went to school. So you were going to be taught the language of whoever the conqueror. But you guys, it wasn't until 1962 that it was compulsory for Sicilians, for Italians to go till eighth grade, Alfred, till eighth grade. Before then, there were many uneducated and illiterate people. It makes people. sense. It makes sense. They had to go work in the farms and exactly. so forth. And, and, you know, you can't keep, compare Sicily today to when it was even 35 yeah. or 40 years ago. Okay. The roads were probably even not passable. Forget about the schools. But let me just tell you that, you know, after the unification, even before the unification, there was a Dante and his divine comedy. And he wrote in, you know, the, the language of Florence and of Tuscany, of, of Tuscany. Uh, but here in Sicily in the 1100s during Supermundo, Frederick II, there was the Sicilian language school, the Sicilian literary school. And that was the first time that Sicilian was used as, you know, as something that people read and talked about. But uh, that also got closed. And then Dante wrote the Divine Comedy, and that became the language of Italy in the 1800s. But it wasn't Alfred until the fascists came into power, and e even like World War II, that they said that Italian must be taught. But again, it was until 1962 that they were required. So here's the whole thing that I want to go with this, because we had a very interesting conversation with Bernie and, and Alfred and, and Susan and Rosalba and her husband about the language of Sicilian and how important it is for the culture, for a nation, Sicily, um, to maintain its identity and culture. And so you mean a common culture, a common culture, like, like Cavour said after the reunification, we made Italy. Now we have to make Italians. That was the underlying reason. Yeah. And there are literally hundreds of dialects spoken from the top of northern Italy all the way down to the south of Sicily. So they try to figure out to have a common identity. That was the whole underlying issue. Yeah, about it. You're absolutely right because right. every region, all the regions in Italy, they all have their dialect. You know, you go to different uh, regions, do. and they still do, and mm -hmm. they still maintain that dialect. But the other thing that uh, she was telling us is that a couple of presidents of the region, the Sicilian region, including this latest one, Musumeci, signed ordinances advising schools to teach Sicilian. It's a recommendation. Not many did it. Uh, Rosalba, who was a principal of a literary uh, school in Catania, did that. Uh, but it is it was 
recommended, first time I think it was 2011, uh, that schools teach this very important language. Now, I, it's very interesting to me, the story about Bernie, who came back here and he's all of a sudden like, why is everyone speaking Italian? I grew up speaking Sicilian, not realizing that everything morphed and changed. How was that for you, Alfred, well, coming at, here, growing up, yeah. speaking Sicilian, then you're like, well, wait a second. You try to talk to some people and they're like, oh, I don't understand what you're talking. First of all, I don't care if anybody understands. <laughs> me, right? That's number one. Number two, I happen to be a Sicilian, 100 uh, percent. Going back to the year 1705, when I stopped looking, I says, OK, that's deep yeah. enough. OK, that's on both sides. 1705. Number two, half the people who came to America during the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, they ended up coming back. Mm. However, they have left today. There are 12 million Americans of Sicilian extraction living in the United States, which is double the population of Sicily. Those folks in the United States and the people who went there, the dysporia, they spoke Sicilian. Yeah. Okay. They come, guys like Bernie, guys like me, we were brought up in a bilingual household, not Italian and uh, English, rather Sicilian dialect and English. Now, I'm too, I'm too old uh, to switch. Okay, I'm Sicilian, period. <laughs> I, t I tell people I'm Sicilian. Her teacher, when she says, why don't you speak Italian? I said, because I speak Sicilian. I'm one of those guys that that's who I am. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. And the same thing with Bernie. Bernie speaks fluent Sicilian. And there are lots of our friends on this very program, Esther, that feels the same way. I mean, that's just yeah. my own opinion. No, I, I agree. And But but I just want to make clear that, uh, you know, the Sicilian, by the way, every area here in Sicily, all the provinces here have a different dialect. So even, even if you go to other parts of Sicily, they're speaking something different, but it, it still does exist. People do speak, uh, still speak it. And, you know, let's hope, and, and there are schools in the United States, I know, that uh, teach it. And we have our friend Gaetano Cicola of Alba Sicula, who also has, I think, his second book coming out called Learn Sicilian. So I'm By the curious way, you about- You should post that after yeah. the program. Gaetano Cipolla, who taught at uh, St. John's, he recently retired. He's like the man for Sicilian cultural stuff. His outfit is called Arba Sicula. It's a nonprofit. And he helps out authors and he, he prints books uh, for people who want to talk about their upbringing, their blah, 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 of Sicilian nature. He wrote the definitive volume one on Sicilian language. And now he's coming out with Sicilian Volume 2, and he has beautiful books on Sicilian poetry that has Sicilian on one side of the page and English translations on the other side of the page, okay? The man has been a jewel. He's been my mentor for 25 years. Yeah. And please put the link up, okay? Iba, I, it will be in the description notes on YouTube and Facebook. I just want to take a second to say hello to all our Facebook and YouTube watchers. Thank you for watching. And if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit the like button. You know, Esther, you talked about Bernie, Bernie Sapienza. <clears throat> and we were, we were talking and, uh, I said, Bernie, what exactly, what was your address in Lawrence? Because he's from Lawrence. He said, 99 Havel Street. Now, I grew up at 103 Havel Street. Would you believe me if I told you it was about 50 yards away from where I you grew up? You didn't know that before? No, because he lived across the street, down a block, in a back, the back uh, apartment houses. Behind my family's, my mother's cousins had a fish market there called Ganji Fish Market. They had the best fried fish on Fridays because everybody in those days had to eat fish. Bernie lived behind there, okay? I just found that out. <laughs> I didn't realize that. 50 yards away. Uh, Peter is here. He says, I speak Sicilian words from 55 years ago, which are no longer used correct. in my town. That's correct. The, the Sicilians, Sicilian dialect, you know, doesn't have a future tense. Did you know that? Why? Because it goes back to the fatalism of Sicilians. Mm -hmm. you know, being a, a people who have been occupied by, as she said, 17,000 different <laughs> cultural groups, 
there was never a there was never an assurance that there's going to be a tomorrow. So dialect in Sicily, and it's very easy to speak. I mean, it's not the words are different, obviously, than Italian, but when you don't have like all these different tenses uh, yeah. to deal with, you can pick it up, and it's a beautiful language. And the poetry that people write in Sicilian is just just spectacular. You know, and we could talk about Giacomo, Renzino Barbera. Giacomo, that, well, he wrote. Right, in I Italian, mean, Giacomo Delantini, he was in the school of uh, Fargerac. He's one of the most well-known uh, poets. But Alfred, the interesting thing, too, is that even though there was that original Sicilian that the Sicils, the Sicans, and the Elimians spoke, every time a conqueror came, the Greeks, the Arabs, they all left a little bit of a mark. You know, you have a lot of words like, uh, you know, the Caltanisetta, Caltanisetta, you know the kanikati those yeah. those types of words zapanana saffron that comes from the different uh influences so, so it's very interesting to see how this um language has evolved listen sicilians like neapolitans like calabrians like you name it from any one of our provinces here what are we really in the final analysis we're a series of tribes and clans that were bound together for geographic regions. Now, if you turn over and look to Turkey and you look over to any uh, country uh, in North Africa, from Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Egypt, uh, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, every one of those is a tribal-based, clan-based yeah. society. And Italy, is no different. Neither, by the way, is Germany. Okay. And Hungary. And, and every Hungary. Other country. Okay. Yeah. So basically, it comes down to two things the clan, families, extended families, and the tribes, the tribal cultural component. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Nick says Italy has 34 current active languages and dialects Bingo. today. Imagine Bingo. that. 34. Uh, can I just say hello to my cousin, Christina, who is watching from ah, Hungary. See ya. That's so nice to see. Uh, okay. The other big thing, uh, hold on, let me just read this. Esther, is your language teacher teaching Sicilian or Italian? She is teaching Italian, but when she was the um, headmaster or the principal of the school in Catania, she required that the kids, the kids that came there learned that they also were studying Sicilian uh, literature, Sicilian culture. You know, she made that a priority in her school. So that was nice to hear. Definitely, definitely nice to hear. By the way, next week, one of the major components of next week, to give you guys a little background, I'm in the process of researching the kingdom of the two Sicilies, the tension and the uh, kind of like the resistance that grew between Sicily uh, in Palermo, the Sicilian power in P Palermo, and also that in in Naples. So I'm going to. Somebody asked. Somebody wrote a an email and asked me to do five minutes next week. So next week, uh, I will do that on the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. Okay, and we're going to uh, do about do that. Okay, Boston. Vince went to Boston, and Vince liked modern pastry in the North End. Modern pastry and Mike's pastry i believe in the north end are the two best uh, pastry shops there are there are others though of course that are just as good probably maybe even better uh, i know in my hometown of lawrence in methuen which is the town next door where basically methuen is where the attack the sicilians moved after they had a few bucks they moved out of the tenements in lawrence and then after that they went to uh, methuen the next town over which is that's really why they call methuen um, Lawrence with trees. <laughs> Don't tell that to Methuenite. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, keep what happened, Esther? No, keep talking. Okay, so um, anyways, that's what the story was. I wanted to also talk to you while Esther is doing something, which probably going to the bathroom or something, I don't know. I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about um, what happened in Siganella, because we only had a couple of minute piece, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit uh, about a little bit more. You do not believe the logistical nightmare that is called when you get a call on Friday or Thursday saying, <clears throat> make room, we're going to get up to 35 or 4,000 uh, refugees in here. 
start clearing away space and this is what we need and i was with my friend mike we were at uh laying on the beach and uh he got the call and what happened was all hell broke loose okay but the soldiers they did it okay the, the thing came down and it was just a wonderful thing to see and I'm back. yeah you know I'm, I'm i'm just stunned at the efficiency of the military it was just great where did you go did you have to go to the bathroom no do pee -pee time? no i had to do something with a computer okay because you know i'm the producer here i'm not just the on-air person producer i have to make sure all the technical stuff is a-okay so we can keep bringing you these shows um uh, yeah mm -hmm. uh, how about talking about san lorenzo okay you guys so this week we went to in my opinion one of the most beautiful beaches in sicily in the province of Siracusa, outside of noto san lorenzo and let me tell you guys this is as close as you will get to the caribbean in sicily the sand was smooth the water was aqua really aqua color right greenish blue very different than in our area i mean it's it's you know san lorenzo it's down south and on the east coast uh but we had such a nice time you know people often ask us what are the best beaches i say san lorenzo has now gone up to one of my favorites i think san lorenzo on the east coast has always been number one for me i've always said and you have to go to noto that whole area noto mazamini pacino yeah. that whole area is great but for me i have a bum knee and I've always been a little bit um, afraid. San Lorenzo, though, was very easy to navigate getting in and getting out, which was very good. There are different price points to enter mm -hmm. uh, San Lorenzo, too. Uh, so you could spend... You could spend up to 50 euro a person, but that was for the that was for the top flight ones where you get your own cabana and all this other stuff. But I think for 20 or 30 euro, you can get one of the other uh, places. And there. even less. We were even there in less. August. Yeah, and, and it was it was Fer Augusto. And by the way, people are flocking out of Italy today. Today's the transit day for Italians who came down from the north to leave. And now what happens is Sicily cleans up. And then it's going to start next week with the arrival of Americans and other groups coming here for their traditional September and October trips. Why don't you give us an update on what's going on? So, you guys, you may have heard this, but the EU will be making a recommendation uh, to get United States and several other countries, uh, including Israel, Kosovo, Montenegro, Monte, Montegren. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Montegrano, why am I drawing a blank on the name of this country? It's one of the six countries that the EU is planning Montenegro. on Montenegro, that the EU is recommending um, for its 27 member states. This is a recommendation to put some additional, um, let's say, rules or regulations or uh, things to protect the countries. Uh, what could happen so they can require americans and and from those other countries to take a vaccine they could and i'm saying could require a quarantine uh but we have no word yet so that's the la latest from the european union which is yeah. again i just want to make sure that everyone understands that this is a recommendation and everything is being examined and re-examined every two weeks so let me tell you even if, which I highly doubt Italy will put anything in place, highly doubt it, it will be revisited in two weeks. So that's something um, that has been sort of new. A lot of people have been asking about here's, it. Look, at here's what I know, okay? We had two and a half million people here extra in Sicily, okay? Oh, in June and July alone. June and July. Not, not included not in, The August. numbers haven't even come out for August yet, okay? That's number one. Number two, like any place else in the world, if you have received your double vaccination, the chances of you getting uh, the Delta variant or anything else for that matter is far less than if you're unvaccinated. So if they're going to do anything, if they're going to do anything, it's going to be it's going to address the issue of unvaccinated people 
coming here more than well, anything else. We don't Wait a know. second, let me we finish, don't know. Okay? We don't know. They don't know, and when she was she said that. But here's what I do know, okay? All the money's on the table right now for September and October, okay? We have a brand new national airline starting up that's taking money, okay? Rest assured that the Italian government is going to do everything in its power, that. okay, to make sure that September, unless there's a, a complete catastrophe and something blows up in their faces, rest assured yes. that they're going to get this season in because their national airline will go belly up. Okay. They can't, they're just starting up. Number two, what about the businesses over here? Okay. Which are, which are on their knees and they finally had yeah, two months of anything. paying old bills. So believe me, and Muzumachi has done the smart thing. He is busting the chops of everybody, including the bottom 55 communities who have not gotten their vaccination levels up to an acceptable uh, exactly. percentage. Okay. So every day that goes on now, okay, they got to work to hit that 70% yes. mark. And they have 200 different. Uh, mobile units out there at least whacking Alfred, people Alfred, what? Alfred. first of all it, first of all at least 200. secondly the Every other day. thing it's not just muzumachi who's the president of the region but also the mayors are taking to social media which is apparently yeah. the best way to reach them uh to urge people to get vaccinated but going back to this eu recommendation uh that each member state will have a choice to make and the bottom line is they could do nothing we can do you know we can't just worry about it leave it up to god all the EU whatever can do is recommend That's they can't all... compel exactly so if they recommend to italy do something italy could say well thank you for your advice but we're not doing it exactly we'll start in november when everybody leaves <laughs> i'm is... serious that's what they're going to do uh silvio they'll, from... they'll lynch muzumeci if he does that they can't well it's i mean come up, on up to italy not muzumeci uh silvio says sicilian dialect gathers some different languages yep. Mongibedu, it means etna has an arabic word Mongibedu, i love that word and in, in bedu bedda my two favorite words uh it means <laughs> ma montagna uh chircasa cherry and french language chirassa. Chirassa, and the french language Chirase in French, etc., etc. Silvio is always coming in here with a wealth of information. So I love, love Silvio. That. I hope things are okay for him too. He's got a B and B, a beautiful B and B, right down the street over here. Uh, Silvio, you ought to put the name. What's it called? This B and B. We should put it up for the man. All right, Tony guy. wants to know: Have you heard anything about Scala de Turkey being closed for access restricted because of tourists, uh, of danger, and of collapse? Yes, Tony, it was uh, closed down for a few months. In fact, a, a bunch of Instagram influencers, I hate to even say that, in, influencers, but Instagrammers who have a lot of followers were caught taking pictures and they got a big fine. I'm not going to say any names. And Tony, let me just tell you, I don't know. Uh, you're watching this at the end of August, September. I don't know what will happen, it, whether they will re, um, lift that restriction. So that's that. Um, what's mama cooking? Hello, what's mama cooking from upstate New York? Uh, our buddy Frank is here. L, if the restrictions are imposed, the economy there will suffer. 100%. No kidding. That's agree. what I'm saying, Frank. I'm saying they got to just delay, 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 delete. Okay. Did you see Once that? Christmas comes. Yeah. Everything will be over. The high tourist season is over. Listen, if people are getting vaccinated and the only people who are getting this Delta variant, or not the only people, but a significant majority of the unvaccinated, this isn't the United States. They will turn the screws yeah. more and more and more. Unlike the, yes, we have anti-vaxxers here, but guess what? The national government is on a mission to get this com this country back on its feet financially okay and they got to play hardball and maybe they have to i guess go ahead okay here's some information that i didn't see before coming on air roberto speranza just signed a decree from august 31st until october 25th it says fully vaccinated people from 
and still need to present negative. That's COVID. exactly what I that's was great. saying. That's great. Fully, that's what I was saying. That's good. Way to go, Woody. Woody, I, before I didn't get a chance to go and scour. Uh, if you're fully and vaccinated, things, you're going to be okay. And to be honest with you, if you're coming from the United States and you're unvaccinated, but you've been hanging around people with the Delta, don't come here. Oh, I mean, that's, not, me, that's Alfred speaking. Okay, okay, we're not professionals. Uh, Cheryl no, it's my Kramer. Own uh, Cheryl, I hope we answered your we question. We just answered your question, Cheryl. Okay. Uh, I just want to say something. Uh, Frank, I uh, he bought one of our Yumi and Sicily t-shirts, and I put him up as one of our stories. He looked really good in our Yumi and Sicily t-shirt. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that we have to offer in our merch. And We're having this? today, Esther. Yep. Because this buy one, get the second piece for 20% off has been flying. On the left, you see the picture of the long sleeve men's t-shirt. And on the right, you see a picture of the women's V-neck t-shirt with embroidered logos. Those are not silkscreen logos. The women's come in red and teal blue, except yep. for the women's small, because they were out of that. And we got a beautiful yellow, mustard yellow color that we've run before. So for the women's small, we have mustard yellow. And for medium light, it goes all the way up to double XL. The same thing with the men. We have two colors too, black being the best one. We have black and we also have teal, okay? Buy one, get the second item, and not just that item, but any item, 20% off. Cool. So give uh, Esther a, a yell, place an order. We take whatever money we get. We put it right back into the company. And, and we appreciate your and support. And we appreciate it. We definitely appreciate it. Our numbers are getting up and up every week. More and more people are watching us. Mm -hmm. We have Facebook. We're on Facebook. And we're on different platforms now. YouTube. Yeah. Um, Enrico says, so you've never been in Sola de Conili in Pantera, maybe the most beautiful in the world. And guess what, Enrico? I'm going in September, but so far, uh, San Lorenzo is one of my beautiful, most beautiful beaches. But I'm looking forward to going Wait to Pantelleria. I also like San Vito Lo Capo on the, in the West Coast myself. I think that's a great place for swimming. Yeah. Of course. Well, I see. And there are others too. There are others too. Okay. But I think those are one and two. And I would match those two up against any in Europe. Okay. So a lot Diesel. of people coming in and asking. So we have to take a test before we arrive and when we arrive at airport. When I arrived um, to Sicily back from Boston two weeks ago, it was mandatory for me to take a test at the airport. Now, this news is just evolving. I will definitely put in on YouTube and on the show notes, if you go into the descriptions, the latest. I will also be posting on Facebook about it. So we'll keep you guys updated. Don't worry. I want to say hello to Mike Costello and uh, need some super fat guy. We've got XXL. Wait a minute, Mike, can I say something about that? Before, and, and first of all- Wait, before, can I just say- No, Mike, Mike says I fat say, guys. Wait a minute. Wait, Mike, You're I just want to say hi to Mike. And Dusty is here in Isola de la okay. Femmine. So I want to say a benvenuti for her. Too bad Mike Costello couldn't be here. Mike, <laughs> well, anyways, first of all, we say pleasingly plump. God bless. <laughs> but anyways- I just found out that I can get this stuff, like say for example, the men's polos and the t-shirts all the way up to four XXXL, okay? So what I'm gonna do in the next order, if there's enough pleasantly plump people who want larger sizes, let me know, I'll take your name. And when we when I put the order in, because I, I, those, those, these, these long sleeve t-shirts are great because you could wear them underneath the jacket. Yeah. Like a lot of people here wear those long sleeve t-shirts under a sport jacket on a Friday night with a pair of dungarees, and man, they look really styling, or in a leather coat, or a suede coat, so they're really cool, and they were tough to get, so I'm very happy that we bought them. Uh, Josephine is watching our faces. I want to go to Pantelleria, where do you suggest to say? I'm going there in September, and I will be doing live from there, from wherever I'm staying, and I'll be happy to give you guys a review Again, we go live on Sunday and Wednesdays, but you can find these videos on our YouTube or Facebook, You Meet and Sicily. So 
the wait a minute, Angel, read Angelo. He read my book. Anybody bon read my book? No, books? I received your books and started reading right away. I'm enjoying them very much. They put both a twinkle and a tear in my eye. And Angel, that's really nicely put. We I, like I haven't been advertising the three book for nineteen dollars. My my last three books for nineteen dollars, including shipping special, because we've been kind of focused in on the t-shirts. But if you still want that, any of you other people who want those books, Jennifer has them in Massachusetts and she could ship them immediately. So what you want to do is just make a payment to my PayPal, which is alfredzappler.com on PayPal. If you're having a hard time, just let email us, me. <laughs> let, me, let Esther know when she'll, she'll fix it. Marcella out. Hamilton is watching from Denmark. I so enjoy you too. Hubby and I will be coming to Sicily from Denmark in October. Can't wait. That is Denmark awesome. is great. The, oh, that's a great that's a great country i want to go great, there i want to go mm -hmm. there um let's see jeff Joya. smith t-shirts 21.99 yep. hats 23.99 yeah but Correct. if you buy in bulk the the most the more expensive one 20 percent off 20 percent off okay so esther will help you calculate how to do it but i think it's a good deal and they're not cheap cheap t-shirts either they're good t-shirts one thing about the t-shirts that i have I have some now that are five years old that still look as good as the day I bought them because I don't put them in the dryer. After I wash them, yeah, and I only put them on the quick cycle too in my my washing machine. I line dry them. If you line dry t-shirts, you can yeah. get. Tri I was reading about that one time. Triple the length of time, you know, on the t-shirts. So. Okay, Vicky is here. Uh, she's also our friend from Siganella. Nice to see you, Vicky. Uh, refer to your airline's website. Usually it has been within three days, but it depends if they say PCR or the rapid. Personally, I would get the rapid test the day before you leave the U.S., which is what exactly what I did. Yep. In Sicily, traveling to the U.S., the PCR was 50 euro. Uh, at the airport in Catania, Vicky, it was free. Coming back, I didn't need it because I'm vaccinated, but I don't I have to. I think it's 15. Three. I think it's 15. Where? Going back. What's 15? No, test. getting the COVID test. Yeah. It, no, getting the COVID test here in Sicily was free for me. It was free? It okay. was free. Yeah, it was definitely free. Uh, it's all free in Sicily. Funny, funny. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are voting for also for San Vito. San Vito Lo Capo is nice. I uh, like San, they have a better selection of restaurants in San Vito Lo Capo. Okay. They, yeah, it's but more we were of a, in a very exclusive a, place now. They have a vibe of a lot of stuff there. You go to San Lorenzo, is beautiful, okay? They have a restaurant on property. They have all those bars. You didn't even see it. They have a sit-down restaurant. I know restaurant. they have sushi there. They have bar. They have sushi. They have... San Vito is... They oh, have I'm more sure, They right? have more, more stores, more restaurants. There. But listen, San Vito Lo Capo and San Lorenzo, San Lorenzo is a part of Noto. It's not like its own little... No, place, I understand. There, right? there, are other, there are other beaches there, too, next to san lorenzo that are very good as a matter of fact mick jagger liked that area so much he just bought that's a house right. right around the corner there from there not so far that's away right. and the fish down there is terrific and by the way christine leone's here uh, uh the olive, olive tree, tree memorial, memorial. let me answer this question yeah. real quick hi are the uh, car rental places back in business some of them are some of them are closed. I've had, we have clients coming in September, clients coming in October and November. They've all reported problems finding some places, but there are. Now one client, and I can't remember what the car rental place that um, he did, but he said it was very, uh, he got it very quickly. And again, I'll put this on in the description of the YouTube video where you can put it, but they are, um, check with them. It, it was a big problem because they sold their fleet, right? So you went to Katana airport and the, that whole area, if you guys have been where they, um, do the car rentals was empty. So now they're starting to get back a little bit more. Uh, Christine Leone is with Olive Tree Memorials where you can plant an olive tree in memory of a loved one or as a gift for someone, olive tree memorial. And she's all over, um, we're all over Italy. Uh, oh, that's right, in Sicily in and In Sicily Italy. and in the Italian peninsula now. She's really grown with this tree thing. And you don't have to give it just for a memorial. 
you can give it for any reason at all. Birthday. Okay? Birthday is a gift, is whatever. Allstreetmemorial.com. Tell Christine that Esther and Alfred send our love because she's a dog. Love her. I'm sitting watching this, having a panela and cro yeah. <laughs> crochet. Palermo's famous Nino Bellerino. Wow, good to see you here. Speaking and I about Palermo, and I, have, I forgot she's, to tell something very she's important. She's also coming in this way. So maybe okay, we'll I had one more thing to say. It slipped my mind. Oh, There's that's so many, right. So many the things first, in my the woman from Palermo. We, are you gonna? Go um, this is called a teaser. I don't need a teaser. teaser. I'm okay. teasing it. Speaking about Kabul, getting back to Kabul. Uh, this 25 year old Afghanistan, yeah, Kabul. Esther. Okay, uh, okay, <laughs> 25 year old Air Force pilot, a female from guess where Palermo, got the last group out of Kabul airport in Afghanistan. Okay, <laughs> and as they were taken off, they, they came under fire. Okay. Yeah. And she skillfully avoided whatever it is, fire that there was coming, and she safely landed her plane wherever they were landing their plane. 25 year old female pilot from Palermo is being celebrated today for her yeah. for her heroism. How's that, huh? That's the science. There you go. I love that story. Uh milestone birthdays and weddings too. There you go, Chrissy. Milestones, birthdays, and weddings. I agree. Okay. Uh, Dave says, picking up a SIM card in Catania, simple as visiting a Tim retail store. Grazie. Yeah, you can do a Tim, Vodafone. Who else? Wind, trade, Wind trade. That's what fast we use. web. There's a million places that you can go to. Most of them are, if, you, if you're stopping in Rome on the way here, if that's where you change over places, yeah. Brazilian places there where you can do it. It's, in Catania, they're all over the place. Yeah, I mean, there's a place in Naturale. There's a place in. Um, there's a main place in Catania. La Punta. At the, yeah. There's the places at La Zagra, the, at malls, the malls. Every place, every yeah. place. And by the way, just so you guys know, you would not believe the sales going on in the malls right now. Okay. Well, of Inventory. course. Inventory. I've been seeing stuff thirty to seventy percent off in the in the malls, and I'm not talking about junk. I'm talking about stuff that you know a couple of years ago was selling for like a hundred dollars a garment, and now you could you could just I don't want to say steal it, but take advantage of. Well, it's the, also the new season; they're selling out the summer clothes. I think that they're selling Saldi, out the summer clothes for two years ago. Myself, <laughs> well, they're, of course, they're, 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 there's some great deals. Um, I mean, a pair of shoes is a pair of shoes. You think I care if they're, you know, 2020 style? I mean, the rest of my stuff is 1959 style, anyways. Right? I didn't say it. <laughs> no, I like your preppy style. Salvatore says going to Palermo and Castellamare del Golfo, second week in September. We love Castellamare. You're going to yeah, go have there a all great, the, great, great time. Marina is nice too. Vicky's at, full of great information. Rome Airport no longer Rome has, has the Vodafone. Vodafone. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other thing that I say to people is, uh, you know, if you're coming here for a month, two months, three months, whatever, yes get a tim card but if you're coming here for a week two weeks even three weeks most um cell phone providers have a travel plan for instance before i bought my italian phone i also and i, and I came here for a, a short while which ended up being a long while uh what i did was use my verizon uh travel plan if i didn't have my internet right so that's what i did i have three phones I have <laughs> one phone that's an Italian phone, one phone that's an American phone, because when I have my Italian phone and say, for example, I want to check my bank balance and I accidentally pick up my Italian phone, <laughs> they, they always say to me, since you're on a foreign phone, we're going to send you a text and send this back to code. But guess what? They send it to my American phone. So I have an American phone and I have an Italian phone That's and I life. also have a dumb phone, which is connected <laughs> up to nothing except the house internet. So when I want to watch Netflix or whatever like that, I'm, all set. Set. I'm not sucking down the old data stuff. Dave Riga, the Buto, Syracuse or TJ, go for swordfish or tuna for lunch. I'll tell you an advice on that. Go through the fish market in Ortigia, you know, the one by the water. 
and see what they have for sale and what looks fresh because different times of the season, uh, tuna is not always available. Uh, I believe tuna is available right now, so that's a real specialty. I think tuna or swordfish, it, God, that's a, that's a difficult one. I hope you're going to other places in Sicily because really uh, swordfish you can get pretty much everywhere. Uh, grilled swordfish is like one of the specials, one of the regular meals. So most restaurants will offer that. But tuna, that's a little bit more special. Not all restaurants offer tuna. You know, I can make three suggestions, four suggestions, quick suggestions for you about seafood. Number one, you're not going to go wrong with swordfish because they cook it here a lot different than in the United States. Yeah. Or tuna if you can find it. Number three. That's, that's numbers one and two. Number yeah. three, be careful in the hot weather when you order oysters because some restaurants, they're not on ice. They're warm, okay? And there can be bacteria built up on those guys. So be careful if you're going to use that, okay, if you're going to take that. Yeah. And then finally, number four, you can never go wrong with a good uh, risotto di mare. The risotto, and they put all the different types. Well, any, even in pasta con frutta de mare. Calamari, and all even calamari, no, frutta de mare. Frutta de mare. What did frutta I say? I can't remember. But Whatever it was I said. Yeah. But but great he food, asked great specifically food, yeah. in Ortigia. Uh, that's one of the things you know that's so fun in also in downtown Catania. You go through the market and you see what's fresh because you know the fish from there go straight to the restaurants. Uh, so th yeah. that's one of the things I would say. You know, one of my favorite. Um, dishes the tuna dishes is one of the cooking demos that i did my very first year here at cafe de mar we did that uh seared tuna with the caramelized onions and mint on top that was the leftover or how there, about was, the involtini? there was there was not not with the tuna swordfish the swordfish, in both in both yeah, uh, uh espada that's that's a different very very meal. good very the good. other uh thing that i never expected is to have the the uh, swordfish in a sort of caponata type of a thing. So they have the little pieces of swordfish, then they have the eggplant, the the carrots, the celery, or whatever. However, they make the caponata that comes out cold. And you know where we had that? We had that in Agrigento. Excuse me, that oh, was tuna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuna. tuna. That was tuna, tuna with a caponata style, and they served it cold. That was fantastic i have an idea right now esther yeah. but you have to help me with the word what's the name of the new hamburger that i'm in love with the new meat scotana it, what is it called scotana which is a how do you spell that s-o-t-t-a-n-a -T -T s-o-t-t-a-n-a okay it's just kind of like coming into being in sicily what do you mean it's, it's been around forever i've never You're seen discovering it. it now right if you want a good hamburger or a steak steak See if they have the sotana, okay? Because if you get not a regular, at the, not at the restaurants, Alfred. They won't have it, Alfred. Like seriously, no. Well, okay. Say that they're staying at the house and they get to buy some food and they want to cook some that's, food. That's you go to a supermarket. What, you're going to come here to Sicily to have hamburgers. There's nothing wrong with a hamburger. I There's remember one time we had a hamburger, tour. We but had they're a tour not going to come guy. here. But we he had... was here for over three, like he was here for a month. Yeah, he and then one take day him he's to like, McDonald's. I need a hamburger. I had to take, I had to take one of our clients to McDonald's so we can get a. A Big Mac. He missed it. Listen, are you guys coming here to eat Sicilian food? Then hamburgers yeah, not. Uh, ciao to my favorite people. Love watching you all. We have to be careful. We got lucky from Good. Hurricane Ida here in Galveston, Texas. The police play for all of us in New Orleans. Uh, they are yes. getting hit right now. Lots of Sicilians in New Orleans. I'm sick to my stomach about There's, that. I am yeah. sick to my stomach about that, that they're getting whacked. New Orleans is getting whacked again. Yeah, I mean, God protect. There's them, a lot please. going on. Yep, there's a lot going on, Esther. You're exactly right. <laughs> Julie, Julie, by the way, welcome. She Cheers just became. She um, yeah. she just became a member on YouTube. If you guys don't know what a member is, um, when you go to our YouTube channel and next to the subscribe, there's the join, and for a dollar ninety nine a month, which is less than a cup of coffee. Uh, you support and help this channel, and also we put some bonus uh, material there 
that is not posted anywhere else. So oh, wait thank you, Julie. And Julie also bought a bunch of uh, T-shirts and stuff like that. I have an announcement to make, a hot news flash that we both completely forgot because we're imbies, okay? Remember little Tommaso? Oh! I'm talking. Thank you. <laughs> it's my scoop, if you could tell. <laughs> He's coming home tomorrow. He's coming home tomorrow. Tomorrow night. And if you guys are new around here, we've been talking all this week about our neighbor Tommaso. He's uh, two months, uh, two year, less than two years old. Twenty-two months. And he had a little bit of a problem where he couldn't stand up, and uh, they took him to the hospital. They suggested that they take him to an expert um, up north, and he's been getting large doses of injections of vitamin C. And literally every day we see Andrea, the father, who's by the way staying home alone. Two kids, two, two dogs, kids. Yeah. two three kids, dogs, three dogs, and you know all the housework. Uh, he's been every day saying, "Okay, today he stood up, and he, with help. Today he stood up without help. But today he took a few steps. But the other day, maybe it was like two days ago, he's like, they're coming home Sunday or Monday, but it's definitive they're coming.' He's home not Monday. walking perfect yet, but as uh, Andrea said, he's walking." Yeah, which is important because two weeks ago today the kid was like a he was like he couldn't even get out of bed he was like all flopped out yeah. and it just warms my heart the outpouring of prayers yeah we made an announcement on Facebook and it, there was over two hundred and fifty people saying prayers for this kid yeah and also so here on, on YouTube, Tuesday here on YouTube and Facebook everyone right. has been great as well so on Tuesday because they're coming home Monday night so on Tuesday Andrea's gonna you know, hold up Tommaso no on the, uh, yeah what are you gonna we'll, do we'll, we'll take, a, we'll, we'll take we'll, some we'll photos take, we'll take a little short yep. video maybe uh, yeah, Pat I'm really, really happy. eat oysters in the <laughs> on in the arm yes bus. I agree with Pat hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, Thomas Catone, do the small towns still have the guy with a little flatbed sure. truck selling? Fre of course, of course, they're all, they're over, all the over the place. The they're driving they're, it, with the ape. Ape, yeah. They're, bees, they're the drive bees, with the yeah. ape up and down, and they honk, and that's I love that part of that. In some in some little villages, that's the primary way that the uh, elderly people get their vegetables. They go up and down the side streets, and exactly. and, and the women take their and if they're the top floor they right, put they have down string, the bucket yeah and, and bucket, then they pull they, it up the same thing with the bread the same yeah. thing with the bread too so some of these elderly you know some of these places i don't understand how the elderly people can negotiate some of these stairs and hills oh i've seen them walking up and down it's and they're used to it they're used to it they're used to it i'll tell you one other thing too sicily is not that handicap accessible friendly okay it's starting to but it's, it's starting to but not too much it's not handicapped accessible ex except if you're on the first floor i mean we have to go we that's one of the things because i have a bum knee now i'm really in tune to hey every place yeah. only on the first floor do you have an elevator blah 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 but it's not in, listen, I've seen in the small women towns, here, forget it. Listen, I've seen women here carrying groceries with their heels and, and the it's whole crazy. nine yards. So they've Although got they a hand. Wait a second. Alfio, they started that a couple of years ago. Yes. Go to Valpeche for an excellent selection of large variety of seafood. Hard to believe they sell so much of what they have on display. Ask for Nino. Alfio, as you know, we love Valpeche yep. outside of Acitrezza. It's a great place. Frank, it's a sin there to put cheese on some seafood pasta dishes. You're right. That's, except, except we for, have seen people put grated cheese, especially regotta salata, on the pasta cornetto di sepia. Wait a second. I Let's, saw it with my own eyes. It was it was someone born in Catania but raised in the United States. I saw it. I yeah, it was someone in born in Catania it was and like raised heresy. in the United States. I thought he was going to burn his mouth. I thought God was going to throw a thunderbolt at him. But you're correct. You are correct. <laughs> you don't mix cheese with fish, at least in my household. Oh, okay. Uh, Julie, I know it's not fish, but amazing. Tried to react that 
to we track track. Them. it didn't make it uh food that you must have been visiting not Our, sure uh, not sure what she was talking uh let's say hello amen to alfred Frank. vicky says amen alfred i like when people say amen to alfred whatever it is i said must have been profound right vicky okay <laughs> it's always profound uh <clears throat> yes she, Excuse me. <coughs> oh, uh, do one you more have thing. a favorite gun in your in your <coughs> you're choking. Me. You're choking. Yes, I do, Dave. And it's at the tip of my tongue, and I can't come with near Avila. We have that uh vineyard down there. Dave, I'm gonna message me on YouTube or Facebook or send me an email and I will tell you what uh great by great. Here, drink some water. You dry it. Okay, here's a here's a <coughs> tip. Here's a tip Whoa. for you. Okay. Oh. First of all, either the dog is dying or he's fighting. There, I just fed him. Listen, when you go to a fish market or even your local supermarket, look at the eyes of the fish on display. If they're moist, that means it's fresh. If they're glazed over or dry, that fish has been sitting around for a long time. Now, in Sicily, <coughs> it's especially a problem when you see the sidewalk guys selling fish, okay? Because that fish has been sitting in the hot sun. So I redline that stuff. I just go to a place like Valpatri, which is a great... If that place was in the United States, the line would be blocks long, okay? What an assortment of stuff. And the frozen food there that they yeah. have is great. But every one of them. Katya, fish. Katya taught me that what? when I first came here. Are you okay now? I don't have to give fish. you a no. no, but you can. Get... <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, Sylvia, what do you mean, Alfred, is that the best way? So, Sylvia, I said before that one of my first videos here at Yumi and Sicily was making tuna with the chipola, chipolata, tuna with the onions, ancient Sicilian dish. I love that, Silvio. In fact, I'm going to put a link to that. Uh, and it was done in, Alfio, it was done in Acitrezza at, at my friend's place, Cafe de Mars. You so. know, we had a pretty good rule in my house in the States. My grandfather, my grandmother, um, Augustina Zappola, my father's mother, forbade anybody from eating mayonnaise in the summer. So in the wintertime, we could have a tuna, a tuna sandwich with mayonnaise. But forget about it in the summer. And if you even thought of pulling out that mayonnaise jar from the fridge, she would go bananas. Stop! Don't you eat that in the sun? You're going to die, blah, blah, blah. So people still have that opinion. And strangely, when people order um, French fries here, the condiment of choice with Sicilian people mayonnaise. is mayonnaise in the packets. They give you a little packet. Not ketchup you have to specifically ask for ketchup so when you get a big order of french fries for a whole table and you say i want ketchup they'll bring you a whole bunch of mayonnaise and one ketchup so you have to specifically ask am i right or wrong it's crazy. naomi says that you yeah. both are so funny you bring a smile to my face my family is from francavilla there in sicilia oh i okay. love that place that's what that's a beautiful that's what gaetano chipula is from uh, francavilla di sicilia it's up in the Nebrodi Mountains, been there many times. They have great pistachio and then this dish that they're known for up there from Bronte, they get the things is the pasta with the with the uh with the pistachio in it and olive oil. It's just great. Where? It's a beautiful oh the Franca Bula. That's Franca, right. Franca well that Mississippi. the Bronte is right right over there. Roop, so right around Roop, the corner. Say yep. that again. Roop. Roop, right around um, the corner. Okay, if you guys are joining us on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the like button on this video. And I'm going to make sure that uh, whatever the latest information is on the travel uh, from the United States to Sicily and Italy, uh, I will put the latest information on the show notes on YouTube. Things are changing fast, but I'll try to keep you guys On Facebook, updated. she does every night. We have a thing called News from Sicily and Italy, a page. Am I correct in saying yeah. that? And she, it's night, called You, Me, and Sicily, News from Italy and Sicily. Yeah, and she puts it up there. And every night we post, well, she put, she does all the work. I'm just a blabbermouth. But she, does, <laughs> she puts all the work. 
and she does all the work and she's very 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 she's into it okay she's into this number stuff so uh my mother makes mayo ketchup together for dipping fries that's hmm. funny uh rosanna so nice to see you hi dear from tuscany i'm back home see you next time i'm in sicily i'm hoping Where are you? Very so no she just went back to uh, oh i missed her uh carolyn you missed a heck of a show talking about so many things so when we're done here make sure you scroll to the beginning because we spoke about the latest situation here in sicily and italy we spoke about uh, some of the afghan refugees that have landed here in sicily at the siganella naval base uh, we also spoke about the uh sicilian language and a little bit about that so if you guys are interested in that scroll back to the beginning of this video on that note thank you tony and thank you, everyone, for watching this video of you, me, and Cicely. Don't forget to hit the like and share with a friend. Arrivederci. Sabedadiga. Ciao. Ciao.